No, 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 I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. This time we're playing Orion Trail. What's Orion Trail? I don't really know. I think it's a little bit like Oregon Trail and a little bit like maybe FTL. That's what it looks like. It's been sitting on my desktop for fucking months. Uh, so we're checking it out. Select a mission. The only mission that's unlocked, apparently. A sister galaxy to your own. The Wilkie May is nearly identical. Efforts to explore this sector have been put off because it's really annoying to refer to it by name. Pick your captain. Uh, I think we're going with Adria because, you know. Major, it is. Pick your first officer. Seven of eleven. Uh, Cheryl Platts or Rarit Dorchel. Um, I guess you're looking for something to complement your stats. Um, as you can see, I had two tactics, two science, and one bravado. So I guess I, I should try to pick up attack, diplomacy. So it looks like, looks. Let's have, um, let's have seven of 11. Nice. Set seven of 11. Pick your chief. Science? No, we have no diplomacy points at this time. Presumably we're gonna get a comms officer. Right? Should we get a comms officer? Uh, let's take, um... Harrison Benoit. And, uh, pick, pick your comm officer. Alright, so we have no diplomacy, so I guess we're getting that from her. Uh, though these largely seem oriented around... <laughs> Colonel Bananas. Colonel Bananas. These seem um, largely oriented around um, tactics. The, you would expect a comm officer to have diplomacy skills. I would. We'll go with Carmina. Okay. That's where we want to go. Oh my god, that's where we start. We're not going to make it. I tell you that right now. All right, choose your starting resources. You can add crew, you can add food, you can add fuel, or add a hole. Cool. All right. Um, let's get a crew and a hole and a little bit of food. I mean, food and crew; those are the same thing, right? Uh, it's one of everything. Should we just get another one of everything? We're a generalist. In game and IRL. Nice. How hot is my captain? Holy shit. It's like. It's like a blonde Lisa Lowe. Dee -dee -dee -ding. Dee -dee -dee -dee. You say. You only navigate when I want to. So, of course, one, one threat. Uh. To. to Debris, obviously. So you consume 10 fuel and 3 food per dot. A lonely asteroid tumbles idly through space. Its barren exterior has no distinguishing marks except for a series of short, regular trenches carved across its surface. Attempt to communicate with the asteroid. That gives you hull and subtracts crew. Check the asteroid for hostile craft, that's plus hole and minus question mark. And examine the asteroid for scientific posterity, plus crew minus fuel. Or plus hole minus fuel. We don't want to lose any crew. 
We've got fuel to spare. Scientific posterity it is. New science team dispatches a rover to explore the asteroid's surface. Engage. It's a minigame or a rando? It's random. <laughs> Fuck! We landed on the skull! Minus 200 fuel! Minus 2 bravado! Oh my god. The asteroid transforms into a very large rover and begins to make its way towards you. You fly as fast as possible to avoid being absorbed or scanned or whatever. <laughs> okay, that was harsh. Now what's this? Uh, you know, peakish. Right. We're already low on fuel and food. It just does not, not bode well. You're so excited. The last time you were at Omega Mart, you invested in a state-of-the-art efficiency management machine. The TFS 9000 Efficinator. After months of waiting, it's finally here. You can't wait to try out all its functions. Plus food, minus question mark. Plus question mark, minus fuel. Plus question mark, minus crew. Uh... We don't want to lose any more fuel or crew. It's it's this one. Hopefully this won't lose either of those. You'd rather know exactly what you're dealing with before you install your TF TFS 9000 efficientator. I mean, I don't recommend reading the manual for basically anything. Manuals are for reference. Oh, fuck. Oh. I... That sounds like a good thing. The machine in the box isn't the TFS 9000 at all. Uh, they offer a complimentary case of Martian Dream Nutripase. Terrible tasting, but hey, it's free. Moving on. Hmm. Well, am I gonna get the thing I ordered or what? That's where I'm going. The green star, very unusual. Red alert. You've encountered a gravestone. Sensors indicate there's some sort of floating memorial nearby. Your navigator asks if you want to make a short detour. Take a shuttle and pay our respects. Director Adam met his fate by rapid molecular decomposition. Okay, that's nice. It turns out this person was an author, evidently the neatly from the neatly stacked pile of books. You take a copy of the big book of talking good. And learn something. Hey, you got a diplomacy point. That's good, right? <laughs> Hungry and curious, you talk with the Warp Junction Bazaar. Promising goods so foreign, you'll swear they're theoretical. You approach a cart loaded with glowing vegetables, ready to get what you want. Uh, plus food, minus fuel. Plus food minus Q crew. Uh, plus food minus uh, hole. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna lose crew. You angrily explain to the shrinking merchant that she is in violation of bioluminescent vegetative cellars accord, Article Three, Section Six, which clearly states glowing fruits and vegetables must only be handled while wearing sunglasses. Okay. Oh. Is that bad? <laughs> a blast of luminous juice hits your face as the vendor makes a break for it. Your security team chases her through the bazaar, but soon becomes lost in a sea of tents and carts. You scrape the juice from your face and store it in your snack drawer. Mm. That's disgusting. There's no way I'm making it. This, uh, the, I'm definitely losing this game. Uh, rich emerald green nebula, most nebula are envious. Hmm. Incredibly hot star. I'm into that. Red alert. You've encountered a gravestone. Take a shuttle and pay respects. Space Knight, sir. C X O Q M apostrophe R O D. Crew was ready to leave orbit and didn't feel like waiting for everyone. Holy shit. What? 
Minus one hull. Two any ship weapons pop out of the ground and target the indestructible too. By the time you were able to escape, you've taken a few shots. On a routine visit to the science lab, you come upon two scientists having a very heated argument about how many lights there are in the lab. There are four lights. Uh, one scientist swears there are three. The other claims there are four. You see four lights. I see four lights. The scientist who says there are three lights, he's just wrong. You decide to show him his error and support the other scientist because she's in the right. Oof. It's very tense. Through careful questioning during a productive working lunch with a lavish buffet, you realize they're both right. There are four lights, but only three are on. One bulb is burnt out. Everyone shakes hands, and that's the end of it. If there are four lights, there are three lights. I guess I agree with that. On principle. Moving on. Captain... Captain Lisa Loeb with blonde hair. Plus one diplomacy, right? Purplish uh, aura emanates from this tiny star. I mean, we're in fuel difficulties. Dimensional rift. An anomalocator whirls to life. <laughs> uh, alerting you to developing to a developing interdimensional rift ahead. This is your chance. Rifts like this one are the piñatas of deep space. Be ready for anything. Uh, send a message. Plus food, minus food. Concentrate all firepower on the rift. Concentrate all firepower on the super soft destroyer. Concentrate all firepower on the rift. That's minus hull. Pry open a gateway to another dimension. Hmm. A message. Your communications officer sends a general greeting into the rift and waits politely for a response. Mm -hmm. Oh, blue star. You made contact with a stranded Nutripaste tanker within the rift. Well, there were a few harrowing close calls. You managed to rescue the feud. Oh, and the pilot. He's probably important, too. Okay. That could have been worse. We're, we're burning through fuel, though. A planet is orbiting this star. It might be worth checking out. Well, there's no choice. It's a straight line. In space, you only go in straight lines. Um, I don't know why I just thought of it, but can you imagine Lemmy in space? I just... Lemmy's the guy who goes crazy and, like, tries to, like, cuts off his eyelids and tries to eat everyone, right? Am I right about that or what? I'm pretty sure I'm right about that. Feats of strength. You pick up a broadcast as you pass a nearby warrior world. All are invited to prove their worth in the fields of glory and win fabulous prizes. Food, fame, lifelong friendships, death. You stroke your chin and consider the proposition. Heck yeah. Assemble the away team. No thanks. Recreational violence isn't my bag. Uh... You know, IRL, recreational violence is not my bag. And I don't really need food. I need fuel. You fly away from the planet until the broadcast is no longer in range. Class M star. Red alert. The savory slip and slide. Mm. Some crew members have lathered up the hallway with Nutri paste and are taking turns. You are taking turns uh, sliding down the corridor on their bellies. You order them to clean it up after you take a few turns. Nice. Lisa Loeb covered in goo. Yeah. All right. I'm into that. Stay. Turn to run you on. Turn to run you on. The way forward is obscured by an endless, churning cosmic storm. 
green light pulses and flashes from within the thick, vibrant clouds. How will you proceed? Coat the ship in conductive neutropase. Use an EMP to negate the storm. Ask to use a nearby wormhole bypass. Uh, we're going to take plus fuel minus food. You issue the order. In a matter of minutes, your ship is 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 a brilliant neutropaste orange. Neutropaste. Neutropaste orange. I'm tired. I wake up early. Yes. Again. Uh, continue. You grip your seat tightly as the lightning strikes begin. To your relief, the neutral place holds up admirably. Several decks complain of a burnt paste smell. It turns out that some of the electrified paste can be conveniently repurposed as a fuel. Move on. I needed that. Uh, orange nebula plus question mark. Plus food. Plus star, plus hole. Uh, plus hole. I'd really rather have crew, but or more fuel. Red alert! An imbalanced breakfast. Due to a rounding error, your entire crew received triple portions this morning for breakfast. You're immediately flooded with urgent nap requests. Seven of eleven. Grant those nap requests. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go first. <laughs> the Robo Raider, the Robot Raider, the AA Moderator on Galaxy Force's chat channel on Galaxy Net has become aggressive. It's awful. Also infiltrated your ship's computer, interrupting conversations all over the ship with comments about pro propriety. Propriety. This must stop. Delete the Robo <laughs> the Robo Raider. The Robo Raider. Uh, plus hole minus question mark. Cyber attack the Robo Raider. Uh, plus question mark minus crew. Uh, I guess we're taking delete. You slipped your security team notes through some clever sleight of hand. Uh, you're... <laughs> <laughs> so the Rover Raider can't hear you. Uh, your orders take it down with minimal damage to the ship. Oh, we almost had the star. So yesterday and the day before, my wife and I watched Ted Lasso. It's, it's much better than I thought it would be. I thought it would be... I thought it would be cringy. Instead, it's just like overwhelmingly wholesome. Maybe we just needed that type of broadcast. I don't know. It was good. We watched it all. Security and engineering remove the Robo Raider with surgical precision. The removal is successful and gives engineering a chance to shore up the hole around your computers. Plus two hole. Nice. Red Nebula. We could use food. What initially appeared to be a star seems to be a planetoid covered in a calm golden ocean. Suddenly your sensors indicate multiple anomalies coming from the planet. Inside your ship and inside your ship. If you believe in space ghosts, this would be scary. I don't believe in space ghosts. Though. Plus food minus fuel, plus food minus fuel, plus food minus crew. It's very expensive to travel, so I'd rather lose crew. Uh, fire a warning shot. You don't, you don't know nothing about no spot shiny space balls, but you sure as heck won't tolerate any spooky intimidation attempts. Load the torpedoes. Get ready for the show. Oh no. Oh. Uh. As the salvo disappears in the gentle waves, an overwhelming feeling of sorrow takes hold of the entire crew. You escape the dread-inducing planet, but reports come in from several crew made their way into the airlock and opened the door. Wow, that's fucking dark. Holy shit.
Moving on. We lost six crew. I don't... I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Captain. Captain, I'm so fucking sorry. I'm really tired. Well, well, no matter what happens, we're gonna end after this um, game. The Space Alamo. A Taco Shan hotspot for trade and re re relaxation. Crew are high in high demand to help with the farms. Oh. Red alert! You've encountered a gravestone. Pay our respects. Vano the not so great, he was torn to shreds by radioactive hypergators. A tendril of lightning appears from the gravestone and zaps your personal an an animo locator, vapor vaporizing it. Your confidence that no data was ever backed up. Okay. We're almost out of fuel. You arrive at the Space Alamo, a popular trading hub for Takoshins. Takoshins. As well as a variety of other local species. The chili people seem to run a type ship around here. So it should be pretty safe to stop for a spell. We should rest. Do you want to rest here and recover some health? You'll have to consume some supplies. Yeah. 30 food to heal HP. HP. We can't spare the food. Let's explore. The Space Alamo is renowned for its orbitally grown produce. But there also seems to be a bar, along with a few other traders in the vicinity. Uh, we need fuel. We have zero credits. Uh, so, sell a food, buy a fuel. Sell a hole, buy a fuel. Sell another hole, buy a fuel. Sell another hole, buy a crew. A food, I guess. Launch. Trade complete. You head back to the center of the market. Okay, let's head to the bar. Take a look around. It's packed with the uh, lively characters from all around the sector. Who would you like to talk to? The lady with power armor. A guy full with a table full of gadgets. The lady with power armor. Obviously, Paladin. What's her name? Sarah Lyons. My my one true love. As you approach, the woman in power armor introduces herself as a bounty hunter. After shooting the space breeze, she lets you know that for a price, she'll be happy to improve your ship's offensive or defensive capabilities. Uh, I mean, we just did the whole thing, so let's let's do defense. Bounty hunter offers to upgrade your shields and sensors as long as you're willing to trade. She's looking for fuel or a hole. Oh, uh, maybe not. Maybe not. I mean, uh, there's a lot of options here. Uh, the guy with gadgets. Scraggly bearded man introduces himself as Erlin. A self-titled grand inventor. He has two devices. A quantum converter for your ship's computer and a device he swears will make you luckier. Luck. Luck. I like luck. I made it myself. Wear this around your neck, and I promise. I made it myself. Wear this around your neck, and I promise that your personal probability matrix will improve. All I'm looking for are a few assistants and maybe food. Uh, I will give you thirty food. Nice. Plus one burrito. Uh, we kind of need more food. We're doing it. Fuck it. Let's leave. It's nap time. The green star. Very unusual. Running low on food. Sensors show a massive vessel approaching, and all channels are jammed with a catchy tune. It's an Omega Mart Superstore. Galaxy Force ships can't repel bargains of this magnitude. Your crew turned to you with big doe eyes. It's gonna be costly. Uh, see customer service for an exchange. Uh, we, we need food, but we need fuel too. Let's just do this anyways, because we're so low on food. 
You approach the massive CompuTerminal terminal labeled Returns and Exchanges. You clear your throat, put on your best disarming smile as you walk up to the imposing monolith of customer relations. I don't, is it possible to get blue stars? I don't think so. You approach the massive copy terminal. Oh no, I already did that. The game is afoot. Definitely, you dodge the machine's conditional statements, stretch the truth, fudge dates regarding purchases. Things get really tense. Finally, you leave victorious, clutching a working flan cake griddle to your chest. Plus 30 food. We can make flan cakes. Uh, a blue dwarf star or a green, a class X dwarf star. Uh, let's, oh, I, I'm shocked we're this far. Blue, it's that chorus. We're running low on crew. Sensors indicate there's some sort of floating memorial. Okay, take a take a shovel. Ben Lyon. Wow, I just talked about Sarah Lyons, and here we go. Everything in his life where he did slow until the end where he descended too fast. Excited to discuss the deeper meaning of the gravestone with your crew, you turn around to find that everyone is looking at their data pads tapping away. You try to lead the crew with some questions, but eventually get frustrated and give up. Man, put away your tablet for fuck's sake. We're there. Somehow the ship's annual talent competition, Indestructible Idol, snuck up on you. If you lose to any of your inept subordinates, then you'll be the laughing stock of the captain's lounge. Who else is in the captain's lounge other than me? Don't panic. You can make that work. Uh, try something new and exciting. Um, plus food minus crew. Um, go with one of your classic acts. Plus question mark minus question mark. That's what we're doing. You know your crew came to hear the hits and you intend to deliver. There's no reason to reinvent the wheel here. We decide to dust off one of your timeless showstoppers. Well, our bravado is good, right? So. Blue star, blue star, blue star, blue star, blue star, blue star! Fucking damn it. Continue. <laughs> Continue. You think you can still pull off your trick where you get hit in the gut with a proton cannonball from a few feet away? The ball bounds off your stomach and careens around the ship like a pinball. It finally comes to rest in the warp core. Plus 100 fuel. Uh, sorry. We need fuel. We need food as well. They're both question marks. A pink nebula or an orange nebula? Uh, I think I prefer orange. Are we going to make it with food? Yeah, we'll be fine. An enormous space manatee looms before the ship. Per the secondary directive, you order the ship to engage the majestic creature for science. Closer. Closer. Too close! The manatee lunges, swallowing your ship whole. Intestinal difficulties, plus question mark, minus crew. Shoot your way out, plus food, minus crew. Ramming speed, plus question mark, minus hole. Uh, we don't have the crew to spare. You can lose the game if you have no crew, so... But we, we don't have a lot of hole either. Um, let's do that one. Ramming speed. Not again. Full impulse ought to knock some sense into and some teeth out of this space beast. Nice. All right, blue star, blue star, blue star, blue star, blue star. No. We got a check mark though. Reverse ingestion, full speed. You order a spread of phasers to keep the mouth open, and you exit a spray in a spray of spittle and tooth debris. The ship is pretty slimy, but you're able to scavenge some biomass suitable for grade D rations. No damage either to the hole, so I know. that's a positive. Nice. I, I, we're gonna win the game. Oh, uh oh. Red alert. Your weapon specialist just lost the shipwide Morkel Crombat. Morkel Crombat tournament. They were super comboed while reciting an elaborate ear mama joke. What are you What are you doing, Seven of Eleven? Sorry, right. you should be fine, right? 
Suddenly the ship finds itself in a golden haze. Uh, what initially appears to be a solar flare is actually a swarm of millions of fireflies. This is remarkable because whoever heard of a firefly in space? Hmm. Uh, your crew discusses what to do. Try to communicate, feed the critters, capture some to study. Cap, no. Try to communicate. Yeah, we have plenty of fuel. You order the navigator to start switching the ship's lights on and off in ancient Morse code pattern in an effort to communicate with the fireflies. Brown coats you net. No. Ah, whew. The fireflies part to let you through. You use extra power turning the lights on and off, but you continue on your way, having made the amazing discovery that space flyers, fireflies, <laughs> space fireflies, understand Morris code. Excellent. Plus one science. So, oh, uh, look, we made it to the end. Oh, oh my God! Round of applause. Round of applause, everyone. I can't believe we fucking made it. Uh, yes? Alright, we won. Alright, I'm tired. I'm done. Uh, I'll be back tomorrow, unless I feel like shit from the, uh, from the, uh, the old, the old heroin needle. I mean, the vaccine needle. Don't do drugs, unless it's legal. And then do them in moderation. Alright, have a good one.